Please go ahead, Sarah. Thanks for the introduction, Remco, and uh, thanks for the organizers. We're only just getting started, but it's been a wonderful meeting so far. Um, yeah, it's been really stimulating. Um, so I'm going to tell you about a project that I've been working on for a while now uh, with a bunch of my co-authors. So we have uh, I worked on this with Luigi and with Simon, with Luke, with Celine, and with Gabor. Um, the paper is not out yet, but it will be soon. Um, so this is a new model for random trees. And this talk today is, for me, mostly a sales pitch, because I think this is a really, really interesting model that lives in a much uh, bigger family of models that I think are also very interesting. And um, we're really only scratching the surface. Like, there's so much more to show about these models. So I really hope that, well, some of you will be interested uh, to think about this either with me or, and some of my co-authors or by yourself. Um, so it's a random recursive tree model. So it's like a model of growing trees. Um, and we refer to it as the random friend tree. So um, the attachment in this tree goes via complete redirection. So what this means is that um, given the tree on n vertices, uh, you pick a node uniformly at random, and then you connect to a uniform neighbor or uniform friend of the node that you chose at random. So it's like you take one step of a random walk um, from a uniform point in the graph. Um, and that's where you attach the new vertex. So this model has a rich getting richer dynamics, or actually more rich with poor friends getting richer. Um, because, well, the more neighbors you have, the more likely they're going to pick you as the, as the friend that they, send, um, that they send the new point to. Um, and especially if your friends have very few neighbors, then you're likely going to accumulate more, a larger and larger degree. Um, so this has interesting emergent properties. So as for instance, like you can already see it a bit in a simulation. Um, like you have really, a really skewed degree sequence. Like you have a few of these sort of hub type structures and then some small stuff hanging off of it. Um, and what's interesting that compared to, well, pre the preferential attachment model, that this maybe reminds you a bit of, well, at least this picture reminds you a bit of, is that the attachment rule is local. So instead of looking at something like the, the list of all degrees in your graph, um, you can imagine that what you do is, well, you enter a party, you approach someone at random, and they maybe introduce you to someone, and that's the person that you're going to stick with all night. And that's maybe, in some sense, more natural to have a local attachment procedure in real-world networks, right? Like, real-world connections occur more through, like, sort of browsing locally than by, like, looking at the network as a whole. Like, if you're going to cite someone, maybe what you do is, well, you stumble upon some paper, and then maybe you look at the citations in that paper, and you pick one of those that you're going to cite. So, I mean, of course, this, this model is um, far from perfect for, mo for modeling real-world networks, but you can understand that there's some motivation for being interested in local attachment rules rather than, than sort of globe, uh, attachment rules that use sort of global properties. Um, okay. So, just to give you a formal... Uh, introduction of the model, we start with T2. So T2 is just two vertices with an edge between them. Um, and then um, we pick a uniform vertex in our tree. Um, so that's going to be, well, the blue ones here. Then we take one step of a random walk. So here we have not much to choose. And that's where we attach our new vertex. And we continue like that. So uh, we pick a uniform vertex, take one step of a random walk, and attach a new node. And uh, that goes on and on and on. Um, and we're interested in properties of this model, uh, properties of the resulting tree um, as n gets large. Um, Sorry, I want to ask one question. Oh, yeah, I mean, how I embed it in the plane doesn't really matter. So, so the blue one is just... Yeah, that's, that's what... Yeah, that's, I mean, there's nothing... There's nothing embedded about this. It's really just about who connects to who. Yeah. So the blue vertex is the vertex attaching, right? Yeah, so the blue vertex is the, is the uniform vertex, and the yellow vertex is the, um, is the random friend. And then, well, we, the new vertex is just, well, the one that wasn't there in the picture. No, the bond doesn't get lost. It's still there in the next. Um, yeah, sorry, the picture is maybe not uh, not the clearest. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, so I can draw it dynamically on the board. Um, let's see, where am I going? Okay, I'm just, can everyone see like in this little space? Or yeah, okay. So we start with say a vertex one and a vertex two, and then a new vertex, vertex three, enters the game. 
enters the party, it uh, chooses vertex two uniformly at random. It only has one choice for a uniform neighbor. Um, so vertex three attaches here. Well, now uh, person four or a vertex four enters, it picks vertex one. It now has chooses one of the neighbors uniformly at renders, random, so either two or three. Let's say it picks two um, and it connects here. And this is how you go on. So the next vertex picks two. Um, one is its uniform neighbor, and that's where it attaches. So you have a growing tree like this. Um, and you see that now vertex one is the most likely to get the next vertex attached, because, well, if we pick three or five, then we definitely have to go to one. And if we pick um, two, then we, um, uh, then we have probability a half of going to one. So one is now going to, is in business to start accumulating lots of neighbors. Um, yeah. No, it picks, uh, well, it pick, first picks a vertex uniformly at random, that's Vn. And then it chooses a neighbor of Vn, uniformly at random again, so that's going to be Wn, and that's where it attaches. So it's like you pick a uniform vertex and you take one random walk step without weights, and that's where you're going to attach the new one. So it's different from choosing uniformly at edge and attaching uniformly to one of them. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's going to give different, uh, different probabilities. Um, yeah, you can already, cal if, you're, if you want to convince yourself, calculate the probability of attaching to vertex three in the real model and in the thing that you're uh, considering, and that's going to give a different outcome. Is there any motivation from science for this? Um, it's just a good model. I mean, it's, it's, it's a sort of nice, starting point to get something rich getting richer um uh starting from a local attachment rule but yeah there's not really a, a, a one clear motivation anita sorry is it yeah so it's i know but if i would just pick one and, and take it away again would it um, if you take a uniform vertex away, or if a uniform leaf away, I guess. Um, I don't think so. Um, yeah, so it would, it would have to be a uniform leaf. And I don't, th I don't think so. No, no, no. I, I haven't done the calculation, but um, no. Um, okay, so this model, the history of this model is very short. So introduces in quotation marks because they introduced the dynamics, but they said that it was a way to sample preferential attachment trees, which is false. So, um, I mean, officially, this is where it appeared first. Um, then there was a paper um, 10 years later by Cunnings and Jordan, and they show that um, the tree contains uh, that all uh, but a negligible number of vertices, um, negligible proportion of the vertices in the tree are leaves. Um, and then uh, there was a paper in the physics literature three years later uh, where they uh, looked at the degree sequence in more detail. Um, and they, um, I will discuss some of their, um, some of their like, well, what their, what their conjectures for us um, towards the end of the talk. Um, it, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Um, so, can you describe? The professional, professional attachment model. Yeah. So, I come in and I want to attach to somebody who has lots of friends, but who's also close by. Uh, so, you have a sort of geometry as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we don't have geometry. I don't, I don't know very much about the model that you're, uh, that you're suggesting. Um, I mean, I would say it's not close to this because the model, the, the tree that we're, get, that we're getting is very atypical of other models in the sense that almost everyone is a leaf. And I haven't come across growing tree models where that's the case. So just by going by the results, I think it's probably not the same. Um, okay. Um, so just to give you some, before we dive into the results that we have and some proof ideas. Sorry, 
version it's much easier yeah 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 it's much easier the directed version is actually um like in the sort of is actually part of the preferential attachment family um yeah that's you can do that with an easy calculation um so uh um yeah so if you can only if you um can only travel yeah if i just have a direction um uh that points to their parents um then you get a different model that's much easier um so um just to give you an intuition for what happens as this as time gets large so as i already said um all but a negligible proportion of the vertices are leaves. And they're typically next to very large degree vertices. So at a typical step, something super boring happens. Namely, you pick one of these leaves and well, they only have one choice for their random friend, namely the big boy. And the big boy gets another, um, gets another leaf. Um, so, well, in case such a step happens, you see that, well, if we're only looking at the big boys then they get selected kind of in a size biased fashion, right? Um, well, sized bias by how many leaf neighbors they have. Um, but that's going to be kind of like what their degree is. So most steps are just something boring. The hubs get even bigger. Um, but at some steps, something different happens. So for instance, if we select this one as our uniform vertex, well, then we're going to hop over probably to one of his leaves. And what you then get is that a leaf changes into, into a degree two vertex with one pendant leaf. And now those two are actually kind of likely to start feeding each other, right? Because a vertex hanging off of one of these hubs, well, these hubs turn out to have linear degree. Well, for a particular vertex to grow their degree, well, first the hub needs to be selected. That's probability order one over N. And then its na specific neighbor needs to be selected, which is another probability one over N. So, I mean, that's just, I mean, probability one over N squared, that's summable, that's, I mean, um, that's going to happen um, at most a finite number of times for every given, uh, given neighbor. But at some point, so at some point you select the hub and you attach your new vertex to one of these leaves here. And then something more interesting starts to happen and you start to form these sort of small structures growing away from the hubs. And that's actually how, for example, the diameter of the graph grows. Um, so, um, so yeah, the, it, in... So these are sort of what I'll later tell you is that actually every edge eventually contains a hub. So this is sort of like a temporary situation to have something like this. Like many of these small degree vertices are, go vertices are going to accumulate lots and lots of neighbors. Um, but when you take a snapshot, you see all these sm this small stuff growing off of the hubs. Except that this is doesn't look very circular. Is that just the way how it's been drawn or is there something else um, I think there's a few hubs there that are interfering with each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so let's move over to the results. Um, so the first result, um, okay, so for every vertex, we let N and nu be the number of neighbors of a vertex U, and we let L and nu be the number of leaf neighbors of a vertex. Um, and um, oh, I've denoted results with a star if I'm going to give you a proof or a proof sketch, sketch later. Um, so first, um, well, I already told you that the largest degrees are going to be linear. So it makes sense to, to rescale the number of leaf neighbors and the number of neighbors of a given vertex by N. And um, well, our first uh, result st states that that converges almost surely to some random variable. that might very well be zero. Um, and we say that a vertex is a hub if this limit is positive. Um, so in a tree, in tree T n, you don't have hubs. Like the hub, being a hub is a limit property. Um, okay. Um, another result, which is very like really sets this model apart from other models that I've seen, is that all edges contain a hub. So for any edge, um, you have that. Well, the sum of these. Um, some of these limits, uh, random variables, uh, is positive almost surely. Um, but again, this is a limit property. So, well, in, as you saw in the, in the picture before, you do have these small degree vertices that are next to each other um, uh, at any given time. Sorry, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you track the progression of a vertex degree 
as the tree goes really, really big. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Um, um, wait a minute. I'll. Uh, <laughs> um, so. Um, uh, yeah. The next um, property is also interesting that you have frozen degrees in the in the tree. So vertices that are never changing their degree anymore. So um, for each k, there is a pk, not depending on n. So that's for any n, any degree k vertex present at time n has probability at least pk to never acquire another neighbor. And this is true for any finite k. So also the things in my simulation that I pointed out as hubs, well, they just have some finite degree. They might never acquire a new neighbor. Of course, the larger your degree gets, the less likely it is that you will stay a hub forever. Um, but still, any vertex has a chance of never, never getting another neighbor. Um, moreover, for leaves, we can say something even stronger. Um, so suppose you have a hub, then the number of leaves adjacent to V at time n, so that, that is a number that goes to infinity, or that, that, that grows linearly, but the ones that ever acquire another neighbor is tight as n goes to infinity. So really, if you're... I mean, this kind of motivates, maybe we should call it random loneliness trees rather than random friend trees, right? Because actually most vertices are just, they have, they're one rich friend and that's, that's all there is. Um, okay. Um, so let's think, talk about distances. So the diameter of the tree um, grows like, grows logarithmically. Um, the lower bounds, I will discuss the proof uh, imminently. And for the upper bound, we use a coupling with a uniform attachment tree that makes distances uh, larger. So um, just by comparing with the diameter of the uniform attachment tree, we can get an upper bound here. Um, so the next result kind of quantifies what I say about, well, every edge contains a hub, but temporarily there's small degree vertices next to each other. Because, well, if you're in a hub, you're very close, if you're, um, if you're a hub, you're very close to the nearest leaf. But actually, there are vertices that are very far away from the nearest leaf. Um, so we define the leaf depth as the maximal distance of any vertex to its nearest leaf. So we take the maximum over all vertices in the tree to the nearest leaf. And then this distance grows like log n over log log n. And that's actually the same order as it is in the uniform attachment tree. I'm so, this is an almost sure um, result. Or sorry, I couldn't. You, you tell me <laughs> if you. Uh, we, no, we haven't proven it. Um, but I mean, should be. I hope so. <laughs> um, but no, we don't know. Um, uh, yes, and this order is actually the same as in the uniform attachment tree. So even though eventually, like, you're going to be at most distance one from a hub, and a hub is a distance at most one from a leaf, um, at a, any given time, there are these vertices that are very, very small away from the nearest leaf. So there's these exceptional structures in the tree. So we take, okay, so for every vertex, we calculate the distance to the nearest leaf, and then we take the maximum over all vertices. Um, what is maximal about it? Maximal. So you take them. So you take the maximal over the over the vertices. Maximal. Maximal. One guy. Um, maximal means that two vertices same as No, no, no. So okay. So we consider all the vertices. Each one of them gives us a number, which is the distance to the nearest leaf, and then over that set of numbers, we pick the maximum value. That's M n. Yeah. No, we don't even know that it's monotone that like said you that said one stochastically dominates said a million. We don't know that. It should be the case, but we don't know that. Like there's really a lot of well low hanging fruit. I think it, I mean not low enough for us to reach it, but um, 
there's really a lot of stuff that we don't know. Um, uh, yes, 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 because every vertex has a positive probability of never increasing. In particular, every vertex has positive probability of staying a leaf forever. Because it's a leaf at time of creation. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's actually bounded away from zero. Like we have a lower bound that works for all vertices ever, ever created in the graph of the probability of ZU being, uh, being zero. Um, okay. So, well, this is almost an answer to the question that Remco asked. Um, so, for n, so we let xn at least k be the number of vertices in Tn with degree at least k. Um, then um, for any sequence that you can think of uh, that's order little o of n, you're going to have infinite number of vertices um, that, have, uh, uh, that have degree at least mn. Um, and I mean, to answer your question more specifically, well, you know that the diameter grows logarithmically, and you know that every edge contains a hub. So that gives you that the number of hubs goes to infinity, right? Yeah. Um, final results that I'm going to tell you about, which is actually um, the, was the hardest to prove, but we showed that the number of non-leaves actually grows polyno polyno polynomially. So we bound it from above by n to the 0 0.9, or like something a bit smaller, and we bound it from below by n to the uh, 0.1. And um, uh, that lower bound also works for vertices of degree at least k. Um, so this, so this uh, strengthens uh, the earlier results um, that st stated that um, the number of non-leaves was just little o of n. Um, so the structure of this graph is we have these, um, every edge um, eventually becomes a hub. Almost every vertex is a leaf. In fact, only polynomially many of them are not leaves. Um, and they're actually going to predominantly be like in these little structures growing of hubs. Um, diameter grows like log n. Maximal distance to a leaf grows like log n over log log n. Um, yeah, that's... Um, sort of, that's basically all we know about the, the tree so far. Um, yeah, um, well, we don't have a guess. Uh, Krafiski and uh, Redner have a guess. And it's something like um, 0.566 is their, is their guess, just by simulations. Um, and um, yeah, I, actually, um, at the end of the talk, I have some I'm planning to discuss like open problems uh, quite extensively. And I have a sort of, I mean, I have a sort of game plan for how, I mean, game plan for how to, um, how to find the constant or like, I, I yeah. Um, any more questions? No? Okay. Um, well, just to, before we dive into the proofs, it's been very, very slippery to get any results about this model. And the main reason is that nothing is local. Like in the preferential attachment graph, for instance, you can just study the, the evolution of a degree on its own, right? You know, if it has degree D now, then the probability that it increases at the next step is proportional to D. And you don't need to know anything else about the tree. Knowing anything about the tree doesn't give you any more information about how this, how this degree develops. Whereas in this tree, um, if you want to track, if you want to know, is my degree going to decrease? Well, then I need to know, are my neighbors going to send me something? And to know that, I need to know their degree. But if I want to know, are my neighbors going to send me something in the next step? Well, then I need to know where their degree grows. So the dependence within the tree really like, um, like it, things become, move from local to global very quickly um, if you start to track it. So there's, um, so that makes it really tough to, to squeeze out um, results. Um, so yeah, in, and same in, a, in the preferential attachment tree, you can, for instance, just track like, oh, you, we have a subtree here. We can just kind of track it on it, its own. We don't need to know what happens in the rest of the graph to see how, this, how vertices are going to attach here. 
Well, here that's not possible. So yeah, local. So really, the global structure of the tree affects how global properties evolve. Um, and because of that, all our methods are pretty ad hoc. Um, yeah, but hopefully there, I don't know. I, I, I have some, also at the end of the talk, I discussed some ideas on how to, I don't know, hopefully make a leap. Like what, how, um, how to sort of get a more general framework for pulling results out. Um, Um, uh, yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Um, so let's move on to the proof of the lower bound of the diameter. So let's say we're fixing a time N and, um, well, then we know just by the definition of the diameter, that there's some path of length dn in our tree. So it starts at vertex i1, i2, i3, and it ends at i dn. Um, then how can, well, a way for the diameter to grow is for this path to grow, and for this path to get longer. And how does this path get longer? Well, we need to attach something to one of these vertices, to one of these leaves, or one of these leaves. And the only way for that to happen, well, they're, on, they're only, the only vertex vertices that can send something their way are this vertex and this vertex. So this one or this one needs to be our uniform vertex. And then one of these, or, expect, or in particular, not this one, needs to be their random friend. So that already gives you a calculation for um, a, lower uh, a lower bound on the probability of the diameter increasing. Uh, no, it's not going to be linear because. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, in the title. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry for um, the confusion. No, this is going to be. This. I mean, this would be a bit weird. <laughs> um, no, it's log n. Sorry for the for the confusion. Um, so um, yeah. So the probability that the diameter increases is low, bounded from below by the probability that this path gets longer. Um, and this path can, long, can get longer by either growing on the left or growing on the right. Um, and, um, well, the probability of not going to this edge um, is at least a half. Um, and same here. Uh, so we get a lower bound of 1 over n here. Um, then, well, we can compare it to a sequence of iid Bernoulli's. Um, that with success probability one over i, and then we can use Komogorov's strong, strong law of large numbers um, that we get um, this, that this limb inf is at least one almost surely. So this was a pretty pretty easy calculation. This was actually the first one we did. We got quite uh, courageous then that uh, this model was not so hard. Um, that quickly changed. <laughs> um, okay, clear for everyone? Can I move on? So how do we show that? Um, that there's an almost sure limit when we rescale by n here. Um, so we're going to track the, um, the, uh, the we're going to check, track the evolution of uh, the number of leaves of vertex V given the tree at time n. So, well, how can it decrease? Well, um, the number of leaf neighbors can only decrease if one of your leaf neighbors stops being a leaf neighbor. Well, that only happens if its degree increases. That only happens if it's someone's random friends. Well, it can only be yours, so you have to be picked. Um, so this only happens if our uniform vertex is vertex V, and if we then hop over to a leaf. Um, when does the number of leaf neighbors of V increase? Well, if um, the new vertex attaches to vertex V, which happens exactly if WN um, is, uh, is chosen as the random friend. Um, well, we can... Uh, uh, we can squeeze in an event here and take, take one out here. Um, and then we see that the probability that Vn equals V, well, it's Vn is just a uniform pick, so that's 1 over n. And the probability that we um, cho choose our uh, vertex coming from a leaf, well, if we already picked the leaf, then we're definitely going to pop up, uh, pick one of our leaf neighbors, then we're definitely going to pick, double, uh, pick V as our Wn. So this is just... Um, 
the number of leaf neighbors of V divided by N. Um, well, if we massage this a bit, we see that um, LMV minus one over N is a sub-Martingale. So in particular, it has an almost sure limit. Um, and then we can bound it, um, well, the number of neighbors, we can bound it from below by the leaf neighbors, and we can bound it from above by the leaf neighbors and the total number of non-leaf vertices in the graph. And we know that this, well, I haven't shown it, but we can prove that this, that this is polynomial uh, smaller, than, um, uh, smaller than n to the point nine. So um, yeah, we get that, these, that ln over n and n and over n converge to the same number. Okay, so that's what's also still a pretty, um, a pretty uh, doable proof. Um, so why does an edge always contain a, contain a hub? So, well, let's fix an edge. And we write NN for the number of neighbors of the two vertices of that edge combined, and LN for the number of leaf neighbors of that edge combined. Um, Okay, uh, so first we observe that, well, how can, what can happen to L and N N when we attach a new vertex to the graph, a vertex to the tree? Well, either the new vertex attaches to either U or V, in which case um, we get both a new neighbor and a new leaf neighbor. So we increase by one, one. Um, or, well, it attaches somewhere else completely, nothing happens, or one of our leaf neighbors grows its degree and stops being a leaf neighbor. So the number of leaf neighbors decreases and the number of neighbors stays the same. Um, okay, so what is the probability that we grow? Well, we're definitely, um, uh, so we're going to grow if um, either WN is the random friend, uh, if either U is the random friend or if V is the random friend. Um, and that definitely happens if we pick one of their leaves as our uniform vertex, because then we only have one place to go. Um, and it only also happens if you hop from one to the other, if you hop from U to V or from V to U, and the probability that that happens is bounded uh, from below by one over the total degree, um, uh, times one over N. Okay. Um, I mean, of course, this one is going to be much, much, much bigger than this one but I'll tell you later why we still squeeze in this tiny factor, uh, this tiny uh, term. So what is the probability that you decrease? Well, to decrease, we need to um, select either U or V and then hop to a leaf. Um, well, that's bounded from above by both the probability of picking U or V full stop, which has probability two over N. Um, and if, uh, if the number of leaf neighbors is below two, then, well, you can also bound it from above by ln over n um, to make it even smaller. Okay, so, I mean, this, so we have this change of ln is bounded from below by ln over n. So that reminds us a bit of um, polyurns maybe. So if we have a random variable that has increments in zero, one, and the probability of increasing uh, is bounded from below by the value divided by n, um, then we can bound it from below by the black balls in the polio urn, so the lim limum infimum uh, is larger than zero, almost surely. So, I mean, it seems that we're in business, but we have a problem because we can also decrease. Um, so we need to work a bit harder to use this to use um, this result. Um, but basically, okay, so the idea is, well, when LN is large, the probability of decreasing is much, much, much smaller than the probability of increasing. So you can probably still couple it to some other poly urn and bound it from below and you're going to be fine. Um, however, when LN is still small, you have, um, so for example, when LN is of constant order, then you have a walk that goes um, up with probability constant over n and goes down with probability constant over n. So you might actually hit zero. You might hit zero a bunch of times. But the idea is that because we have this one over n n here, we're always going to get back up. 
And so instead of coupling it to an urn, we can couple it to a sequence of urns. We can just keep trying because sometimes we might, we might not grow very big, but then hook, we, we bump back up and maybe now it's going to happen. So, um, uh, so by formalizing that argument, you can show that, um, uh, you can show that indeed um, LN, uh, uh, LN uh, grows linearly and therefore NN also grows linearly. Um, so that's, and there's actually lots of these kind of, we ended up using lots of these sort of generalized urn models because often we have something kind of of this form, sometimes with a, with a constant here. So this actually turned out to be a tool that kept, kept returning. Uh, okay, um, and I wanna tell you, because of course I told you that my talk was a sales pitch more than anything else. So um, I just wanna tell you about some questions that are still open. Um, that are maybe fun to work on. Um, so this is, uh, this is related to the question that was asked before. So what can we tell about, so what can we, for example, tell about the law of these ZUs? And um, I mean, maybe a benign question to start with is, does the degree of an older vertex stochastically dominate the degree of a younger vertex? I mean, should be true, but we can't prove it. Um, and sim similarly, I mean, maybe we can say something about the law of, yeah, like the law of Zedu, um, but we don't know that yet. Um, so what we also don't know is, is the number of vertices of degree exactly K of the same order as the number of vertices of degree at least K? So we know that the number of vertices of degree at least K is the same order as the number of vertices of degree at least K plus one, but we don't know that, so, I mean, some of them must get stuck at, at, at K, right? We know that every vertex has positive probability of staying K forever, but we don't have enough independence to pull that into a, um, to, to turn that into a result. Um, so yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this feels like a very silly question. Of course, vertices shouldn't get stuck at level K for some reason, but yeah, we can't prove it. Um, and furthermore, does it hold that all mass of non-leaves concentrates on finite degree vertices. Um, so um, simulations suggest yes, uh, but again, we can't show it. Um, furthermore, does this, does, is there some sort of dis, asymptotic distribution amongst the non-leaf vertices? Um, does, it have some, uh, does it have some almost sure limit? And Kropisky and uh, Redner conjecture that the, li the limit is O to the K minus U, uh, minus mu for mu 0.566. So it has a, when we restrict to the non-leaves, we're going to see a power law, uh, we're going to see power law decay, if their conjecture is right. Um, no, no, it comes from, uh, from uh, simulations. Um, another question is, so, well, most of the, well, lots of the graph is just hubs that maybe have like, that are connected to each other or maybe have one vertex in between, but you also have these, this new stuff growing off of it. So can we say some, oh, can we say something about what those structures look like? Um, furthermore, of course, I mean, the obvious question, what is the real decay of the number of, uh, the real growth of the number of non-leaf vertices? What is the right order of growth? And, um, well, a heuristic for how, um, I mean, how we could maybe get somewhere. So if we have a random, so this is again, this sort of urn reasoning. So if we have a random variable with increments in zero one and some gamma such that the probability that, um, uh, that uh, the, the increased probability is gamma over n times xn, then we see that xn uh, grows like uh, n to the gamma. You can think about the differential equation method if you want to convince yourself of this. Um, well, what is the probability that the number of non-leaves um, increases? Well, that's if we attach to a leaf. So we need to first select a vertex that's not a leaf, and then we need to hop to one of its neighbors that is a leaf. So this is the exact form of the probability of um, the number of non-leaves um, increasing. So, well, we kind of want to rewrite that in this form. Um, and well, we see that our gamma is going to be this monster, but what this actually is, is that 
so for each vertex, you could calculate the proportion of leaf neighbors. And if we can show, and then we take the average over those numbers. So if we can show that the average proportion of leaf neighbors across non-leaf vertices converges almost surely to some number, then, I mean, we're in, in good form to, um, to show something about the order of growth. Um, so ideally what we would like to do is, so as I already said, the small degree, so, okay, so what contributes to this sum? Well, you see that large, every vertex contributes at most one, because this is a ratio, this is a, a, a proportion. Um, so the large degree vertices are not really going to contribute to this. So this is really about small degree vertices, because you have just much more, many more of them. Um, and so we, we want to know what the, what the neighborhood of small degree vertices looks like. And most of the small degree vertices are going to be in those tentacle trees, right? Um, so ideally, we would want to do some sort of averaging over those tentacle trees. Um, and um, so we want to have some sort of independence between different parts of the tree. That's ideally what we want. Um, and, um, oh yes, so um, again, Kravitsky, Kravitsky, Kravitsky and Redner have a conjecture for what this order of growth should be. And that's the same mu that we saw in the power law decay of the distribution among um, uh, non-leaf vertices. Okay, so this is the, the sort of the potential ma master key. This is wishful thinking, but I think this would really be a leap in, in studying this model. Um, because um, uh, intuitively, the, in, the different parts of the tree should decouple at the hubs. Why is that the case? Well, if we think about this tree and about this tree, the only way they interact with each other is through the degree of this hub, right? So, um, so for example, this vertex can send something towards the hub, um, and then the degree of the hub gets a little bit bigger, so that makes it a tiny bit less likely that this one is going to grow. But I mean, this hub is so big, does it really matter whether it gets something from here or not? Probably not. Um, so up to a time change, so of course these, this one and this one can't grow at the same time. I mean, that's obvious, but up to a time change, they should basically be independent from each other because they both can't really affect the degree of this hub by a, by a significant amount. Um, and then restricted to this tree, we just have the dynamics of the random friend tree. We have a sort of rooted version because um, this one can send something towards the hub similar to this one, and very rarely they are going to get something from the, rub, from the hub, actually only a finite number of times in total, because, well, the probability of the hub sending something this way is like one over n squared. So, I mean, that's summable. That's not really going to happen so, so often. So, I mean, intuitively, we should just have in the kind of independence across these small structures. Like the hubs cut the tree into like independent pieces. And if we could show that, then um, we can do some averaging across the whole tree and we get lots of like, um, lots of results become suddenly within reach. Um, so yeah, this is really, I think, I mean, I think to sort of understand this model much better, I think this is going to be, formalizing this idea is going to be, would be really, really nice. Um, there's also some modifications of this model. So WN can be viewed as the endpoint of a random walk of length one on TN started at VN. So what happens if we increase the length of the random walk? So in particular, if we increase the length of the random walk to order log N, we're going to, the walk will have mixed. So we're going to be in the stationary distribution. So we're going to uh, arrive at preferential attachment, right? So maybe by choosing this k, by varying this k, we can actually interpolate between, well, the behavior that we see here and the, um, and the preferential attachment tree. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so, so that's, I think, a really interesting family of models uh, to study. I haven't, is it about, so it's about the same model or? Oh, I, okay, okay. Um, so, um, 
We can also consider partial redirection to kill, for example, some of the properties that every vertex, every vertex might stay a leaf forever. Um, so where, oh, so where um, instead of where maybe we only take a random walk step with some positive probability and maybe we just stay at our uniform vertex. So this would give a sort of mix between uniform attachment and this random friend attachment. And that might give some other interesting models. Um, and of course we can let new vertices connect to multiple vertices. And this is actually a very natural way to get clustering in the model because if you let them all start at the same vertex from which they do their random walk step, you're going to get, um, uh, you're going to get some, uh, some clusters in your graph. So um, yeah, considering the sort of graph rather than the tree version of this um, is another modification that, uh, that can be considered. Okay, that's actually all I had. Um, lots of questions have already been asked, but I'm happy to hear more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least you could have more. Yeah, so that's the that's the last the last uh, suggestion of a generalization. Um, I mean, currently, I'm not going to burn my hands on that because I think um, there's still so much to do for for the original model that's already very hard. So I first want to like I th I think sort of developing more better methods and less ad hoc methods for the for the sort of base case model is I think at least for me the first step. But I mean, yeah, like, of course, that's a, that's a nice generalization to consider. So what's the order of uh, the number of hops? Any idea? Um, no, I don't, I don't know, no. Um, no, sorry, no. Of a uniform. What if you would just fix a neighborhood of a uniform point and then pick one of the vertices uniform from there instead of doing a random walk? Yeah. Because that way you can just, you know, have some uniform law on the neighborhood and with a random walk on a tree, that it would be pretty difficult to do, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, then you're not going to interpolate between this model and preferential attachment, but because, I mean, if you would increase the neighborhood to log and then you see the whole graph, you see the whole tree, so you're just doing uniform attachment. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice idea. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Do you think the, the adding multiple edges is going to be that much harder? I mean, in terms of a social network, that's what you started with. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We do have multiple friends and, and they yeah, actually know yeah, each yeah. other. So it's a much more realistic model. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I'm afraid the answer is yes. It's probably the easiest modification of them all, I would say. I, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be the easiest modification of them all. I think this would be sort of, I guess, the, the friendliest generalization um, because stuff still stays kind of local, well, as local. Uh, um, so I think some of our methods would actually generalize to, to, this, um, to this case, yeah. Using this polia. So in some of the proofs you're using this uh, polia earned uh, thing as a lower bound uh, yeah. for it. So do you think there is this uh, branching process which is also driven driving the preferential attachment is some kind of stochastically uh, inside hidden somewhere uh, in this uh, model also? I mean, so... Why, why polya earns pop up here is because you have some sort of size biasing still going on, right? But it's more like what we often use it is as a lower bound because, for example, by only considering your leaf neighbors. And then, like, um, you grow at least with probability proportional to your leaf neighbors. So, it, but, I mean, but, there, but this is also kind of uh, appears in the preferential attachment. Yeah, in exactly. A, in a way. exactly. 
So this, sure. this works well for high degree vertices because their degree is actually well approximated by the number of leaf neighbors, but it becomes more tricky for if you wanted to say something about smaller degree vertices, because then, um, then I mean, the probability of someone attaching to you actually really depends on what the degrees of your neighbors are going to be, because you probably don't have very many neighbors. So it makes a big difference whether they're leaves or whether they're hubs. So um, I would say that the, the, the sort of preferential attachment thinking works for understanding the hubs, but doesn't work for understanding the small stuff. Ah, Nelly? Yeah, so could you, did you try to look at like local weak limit of this thing? Does it exist, right? No, I mean, because, because ah, it's you're going sparse. to have, Yes, okay, and, and um, no, it's sparse. No, because you have these hubs that are going to get infinite degree. I mean, you're probably the one you're going to draw. To be leaf, yes, and then, and, uh, yeah. The neighbor is going to be, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay, okay. And another thing, um, I mean, I know you have many fruits there, but what if, what if uh, this um, nodes that get new connection a little bit selfish and say I toss a coin and with some probability I keep this connection for myself? Yeah, that's, and, the, that's, oh, that's the, the second one. modification. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think that would actually, yeah, I mean that would break. In particular, all vertices are now going to get infinite degree eventually, right? Um, because they're all going to be selected infinitely often and a positive proportion of those times they're going to keep the, the vertex unless you let this be like vary with n. Um, so yeah, I think this, this would break many of the properties, um, but maybe you actually get a more realistic model because of course in real world models, it's not the case that almost everyone is a leaf. Um, yeah, I was so also so it, it might actually be a sort of, you might actually get a sort of more natural graph. Um, yeah, the analysis also might be. Easy. What did you say? It it could be also that it might also help because uh, because then uh, I mean I don't know how it will be exactly, but on average at least, so uh, to receive something from somebody far away that will be like kind of discounting factor. Usually and usually it may help. So you you may you may I don't know whether you can get rid of this global dependency that you have, but it might. At least on average, it might help. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't thought about it uh, in much detail. But yeah, you might be right that there's a, that okay. it uh, um, makes it makes some things easier. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any idea how you can get your hands upon the zero point five six six? What is it? I don't know. No. I don't know. No. no. Shed some light on it. Yeah, so I mean, I th really help, right? no, I mean, it doesn't help to show what the constant is, but I think, yeah, I mean, I, 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 like how this is going to converge to 0.566, I have no idea, but I, I do think that this is my, this is really the only idea I have to, to get somewhere, so to sort of open up this sort of this averaging across the tree and to then maybe understand. So then you have these young random friend trees everywhere that have various ages in some sense. And you, so you want to know, um, you want to know the sort of distribution of those ages. And then you want to know the, the distribution of degrees within a random friend tree of a certain age. And that's, I guess, shoots. I mean, if that all works, then that might open up how to calculate something like this. All right, final question. Not sale is over, talk is over. Thank you very much for the Thank you. <laughs>